Hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm back. Hello, everybody. Sorry for that uh, Wi-Fi connection problem. And hey, Ray, I'm back. But I'm back and I'm inside the house now. <laughs> I just uh, got out of uh, Starbucks so that I can get a better signal. So let me see. Okay, good. Ayos na. All right, good. Um, I hope everybody comes back. And so we can hang out. Pastor Presik, thank you for coming back. I want to hang out with you guys and have coffee. I miss you all. And hi, Overseer Ballinger. And I just want to show you again my t-shirt says, I know my assignment. That's, that's me. I know my assignment. Um, that's what I do is do my assignment. My assignment is as eternal as the father. <laughs> my assignment. Hey, yeah, just hanging out. Hang, let's hang out here at my place. Um, thank you. Good, good, good. Um, I'm trying to hang out, having coffee with green shirt, Starbucks, um, and I hope you're also hanging out for the night. I know you're getting ready to sleep. Thank you, Pastor Presti. Thank you. Um, yep, yeah, trying to look good for, for the Father, trying to look good for the kingdom of God, representing the Starbucks coffee. Um, I hope I get some, you know, promotion ad for promoting their coffee. But anyway, uh, right now, if you see me, yep. If you see me right now, it's Saturday. I'm off today. I'm not working, thank God. And I'm not working also tomorrow. Sometimes uh, I work on weekends, but today, thank you, uh, Ralph from Singapore. So, uh, yeah, I know, Papa B, I mentioned a while ago to drink coffee uh, that's decaf for the Philippines. But don't drink the caffeinated coffee in Philippines. They're ready to go to bed because uh, you, you can drink caffeinated coffee all day. You're going to fall asleep. So, um, yeah, get your coffee. Get your coffee. Go get in your kitchen. Get some coffee because if you want to stay with me for a little bit, maybe 10, 15 minutes, we're going to have a little chat. Can we have a little chat and conversation? Because I know sometimes when I go on road download, I just do most of the talking. And I don't get to really hear from you guys and um, see your comments, any questions. You know, really like a conversational kind of broadcast. So today, uh, I got up very early, even though I can sleep longer because of work. But I'm just really excited. Uh, I was looking forward to having this day today as my day off, but it's not completely a day off. It is a day of the Lord for me. Like, you know, I celebrate because I can really focus on uh, God, uh, hang out with the Father, hang out with the Holy Spirit, learn from the Holy Spirit, um, and just learn more and get more wisdom. And, you know, when you are growing up, uh, like a real person, you know how the teenagers, when they grow, uh, hi, hey, Denmark, that's my nephew right there, I love you, my nephew is watching, and Philippines, you know, when you're growing up, when you have like uh, those times where your metabolism is high, you know, you have to give your kids lots of food, they want to eat all the time because they're growing fast, like babies, so there should be a time in our lives also as growing Christians, as growing sons of God, that there will be a season that you just want to eat, 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 eat of the word of God and just get and receive from the Holy Spirit. And so I think I'm in that stage right now um, that I just want to be feeding from, from the Father. Um, sister, my real name is John Lloyd. Hi, John. I will be very glad if you state my name. Yes, uh, John Lloyd Barroro. Hi, bless you. God bless you, John, for joining me today along with the others. Yes, I love the ICMA family. I love you too. 
Uh, John Lloyd, thank you so much and blessings. And I know uh, Pastor uh, Elton, Apostle Elton was watching a while ago. Corey, all the ICMA family, uh, thank you for joining me. And Brother Ray, uh, I know most of you are already probably wearing your pajamas. And it is the day is just starting here in uh, United States. And hi, Maria. So, uh, share with me, share with me your thoughts about mind renewal. Mind renewal. Um, so what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is show you what I have in front of me. Yep, I'm gonna give you a little bit of challenge. Um, and gonna you know I'm praying for all of you. And I'm going to show you what I have here. You see what I'm going to be reading today or studying today is the mind renewal. As sons of God and as leaders, you cannot exhaust learning. We have to continue to learn of him and learn of God and learn about our spiritual growth. So this is only the part one of mind renewal. And this is really an awesome, awesome thing. So I actually have this uh, as my study guide. And I just want to read something about here that really struck me. I'm, I was just going to start this in a little bit. So anyway, I just want to show you this. It says that unbelief is not just not believing, but it is believing the wrong things. Now that's powerful. <laughs> so let me turn myself around. So I just want to show you what I'm going to be reading today and studying today. So that's why I look forward for Saturdays and weekends because I can really study about it. So on this uh, booklet that I'm reading right now, it says that unbelief is not just not believing, but it is believing the wrong things. Wow. So just, just think of that a little bit. It is just not believing, but it is believing the wrong things. So um, we, we know about the verse written by Paul that we have to renew our minds. Be not conformed to this world by the renewing of our minds. So share with me a little bit about mind renewal for you. How is it going with the mind renewal? It requires work. Mind renewal doesn't just take place when you get born again. When the Holy Spirit comes to you, it doesn't happen instantly. It requires work from us. It requires sacrifice. It requires your time. It requires motivation. It requires inspiration. And it requires um, a drive to be activated within you to truly renew your mind or my mind or our minds. So um, in, this, in this manual that I'm reading and working on, uh, this says a lot of things about mind renewal. Um, It talks about the thoughts. You know, I know I did a, uh, I did a mentorship on laws, paradigm, and thoughts. Repetition. That's why you see me on road download. If you see me repeating and repeating and repeating, that's part in a process of renewing our mind. Sometimes we don't have to say, oh, I heard that already. Oh, I know that before. You know, I heard it already. I don't need to know. Actually, the reason why uh, it, you were able to say, I heard that already, is because you were reminded again. It was repeated again. So your thoughts started saying, oh, I know that. You know, so the repetition um, helps renewing our minds by repetition of the Word of God, repetition of the things that you learn, and to also unlearn, unlearn the things uh, that are not of God. So how do you unlearn things that are not of God? Um, am I conversing here by myself? Is it everybody still there? How do you unlearn the things of God? How do you unlearn the things that are not of God? I'm sorry. 
The things that are not of God. How do you unlearn it? Unlearning the things that is not of God. To unlearn something, you know, uh, you have to replace that thing that you have to unlearn with the new things. So let me say that again. You know, you cannot break something like an idea can only be broken by another idea. So, or a government can only be really broken and unlearned by getting a new form of government. Um, so, by learning the things that are, yeah, that's right, Ray. By learning the things of God, you're right. You unlearn the things that, that is not of God by learning. Once you learn and make that the priority and on the top of your consciousness every day, then it will not be an effort to unlearn the things that you have that are not of God. Because there is a saying that what you feed grows and what you starve dies. One way of unlearning is starving that thought. Starve the thoughts that are not of God. And when you starve it, then it's going to die. Because thoughts have life. Thoughts are energy. Thoughts have movement. So if we keep thinking of the new living thoughts of God, feeding it, and that's what I'm doing right now. I'm feeding myself with new thoughts. And I have to do this every day of my life for the rest of my life. Because, you know, to be like Jesus and to be like God, it, it, it's our main goal. That is really our reason for being here on earth. That is our original, um, uh, original design. That is our original uh, function is to be like God and with God. Not just to be like God because we, he, he, the Father said we are created according to his image and likeness. You know, but being like him, you know, when Adam was uh, with God, he was still working with God, you know, at that time and training Adam. So learning takes effort. Learning takes time. Learning also takes away uh, something from you. You know, it takes away the things that are not priorities. It takes away the things that may be distracting you from achieving, you know, the goal that you have, from achieving the word of God to be like the new man, a new man, a new creation, and a new creature. So as a new creature, we have to learn, and then that learning will cause unlearning of the old things and the old habits and the old things that are not of God. So that's why in the kingdom of God, it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter about your age. You know, it doesn't matter about if you're young or old or adult. What matters is that our brain, our brain capacity Right now, we're only using 5% of the brain capacity. You know, right now, we're using less of the capacity of the brain. That's why everyone can learn. Everyone can learn new skills, new habits, new thoughts, um, you know, new career. Because our brain is made for it. Our brain is made for it. And so... You know, don't think it's late if you're like 60 years old, 70 years old, 80 years old. Um, thank you. Amen. Being in the spirit of school of learning. Yes, daily. Um, daily learning. It's just like our daily bread. You know, our daily bread is the mind of God and the mind of Christ. Now, you know, you can send in some questions and see if I can answer some of them as well. 
as you hang out with me, if you have the time, and I think I'm gonna stay for a little bit more, maybe 15 minutes, uh, just to be with you. And it just, uh, it encourages me. Uh, increased learning is actually finding out what you already know. Wow, okay, that's a good one. Doing it, doing is demonstrating that you know it and teaching is telling others that they know just as well as you. Wow, that's great. That's awesome, Ray. You should be coming in here and share, share all this. That is very good. Ray said learning is actually finding out what you already know. Doing is demonstrating that you know it and teaching is telling others what they know just as well as you. Wow, that is really good. That is very good. And one more thing, because Ray said a good thing. Learning is not only hearing uh, and listening and reading. Learning is speaking it, reciting it to yourself. You know, when, when we're in school, Part of our job, part of our assignment is to recite something and so we can remember what it is, you know, repetition. So the new learning that we get, and that's a very good point because uh, sometimes we lack self-talk. Sometimes we lack that self-talk, self-affirmation, and self-speaking and self-preaching. When we do our self-talk is when we hear, not just hear, you know, but we are actually feeling what we are talking about. And the words that we speak releases vibration to the cells, to our spirit, to our mind. What we speak creates a vibration in us to make sure that our body is in line and in frequency of what we're saying. So learning also includes speaking, self-talk, teaching. Even if anybody is not listening to you, you know, go out somewhere, go talk to yourself. You know, the people may say, hey, why are you talking to yourself? Well, I'm talking to myself because myself is not just who I am. Myself is the Holy Spirit in me. Myself is I'm talking in the, I'm talking to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit resides in me. So isn't it awesome to where sometimes you can walk alone and talk to yourself? Yourself now is not one person and being. Yourself now is a tr trinity. Yourself now is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you are you in Christ. So when I do self-talk and I remind myself, the Holy Spirit reminds us in our thoughts and in our spirit, but we can talk it out. Because when we talk it out, our voices, the words become physical and it can be heard by our body. Our thought stays in our mind in the spiritual realm. But when we speak it, it becomes a thing. When it becomes a thing, then our body will respond to it, our physical body. What I'm saying is that our words can become physical. Our words, the letters we speak, becomes physical. That's why when you pray over yourself and you command your body, you have that authority through your words. So do the self-talk. Do the self, the self prayer. Do you think Jesus did a self-talk? Is there any in the Bible that Jesus did a self-talk? There are instances that Jesus did a self-talk. Remember when um, he was going to uh, raise Lazarus? You know, he was weeping. And in himself, he's probably saying, you know, he was talking. He was weeping. He's doing a self-talk. But he's actually doing a self-talk with the Father. See, when you talk with yourself, you talk to the Father too, and you talk to Christ. Um, I don't know why I got about self-talk, which is good, because now we're talking about it. Um, yes, self, I am is ever-present. Yes, and when you said I am, 
You know, I am who you are want to be and who you are being. When you say I am, it is you, the what you desire to do and what you want to be. When you say I am that I am, I am that Holy Spirit in me, I am that divine nature in me, I am not just my own, I am a, a triune being, you know, I have the soul, the spirit, and the body, and I can talk to all of that because I have power and authority over that in myself. In other words, we are supposed to be practicing to uh, govern ourselves first, to dominate ourselves first. We have to be able to put ourselves in control and together in order to become effective when we minister to others. Because there's got to be a unity that will bring understanding, that will bring much wisdom and much knowledge on how to share the right words and how to give the right words at the, at the right moment. So we have to be so together within ourselves. So, uh, hi, Lila. Hello, how are you? God bless you. So, um, do some self-talk. You know, self-talk with the new self, with the new creature. You're now a new creature. You're now a new, a new person in Christ. So now talk to this new self of your new self of who you are, that identity that Christ is in you, that new you that you now know that you're free, that you're free. You have freedom. What is it that you would do with such freedom that God has given to us through Christ? Hi, Pastor Christian. Um, you can share some more insights if you'd like, please. Um, this is just a conversation, a hanging out, uh, hanging out in my place about mind renewal. And I'm going to be studying that. And every time you do a studying, we got to do it over and over again. We can't receive all that is said and spoken 100%. And accurately. That's why we have to do repetition. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. I love you, Lila. Please say hello to your family. Praying for your family as well. And continue to be well. You know, continue to walk in the strength of the Lord. Continue to, you know, abide in Him. And that your strength comes from the Lord. That He will give you the wholeness and the boldness also to walk in a body that is formed in a normal way and back to where it functions. Um, hello. Hi, Lupe. I'm here on Facebook Live spending some time hanging out. Hanging out, not road download today. It's just a hanging out time. And trying to talk and share a little bit about mind renewal. Um, you can share... You can share some verses if you have some things that uh, you are reminded of about mind renewal. Let me just talk a little bit about the brain. Well, you already know about that, about the brain. I share with this about the neurogenesis, that our brain regenerate, or generates new cells. And of course, as a physical therapist, you know, I work with a lot of people with brain problem, integrated oneness, just uh, as the father and son. Yes, that's very good, Ralph. Because if we are integrated and if we are one with the father, then when we talk to ourselves, who are we talking to? Now, that's, that's the thing. If we are really one with God, who are we talking to and who is talking with us? You can't separate us from God being one with him. So when we talk, he talks. When we listen, he talks. We listen to him in our own mind, in my own thoughts. But we got to make sure we know the thoughts of God and not the thoughts of the enemy because the enemy can throw some thoughts 
and landfall, landfall in the brain and the mind. So we got to make sure that we know the frequency of the thoughts of God. And the only way that we can renew that is just keep hearing it and hearing it and hearing it. It's just like a song. The end of song, when you hear it long time enough, and there's some contests or sometimes on television, they will just give you one note. They will give you one note and say, guess what song it is? Just one note. They already know what song it is. So it's the same thing with God. That only one word, only one note, we know it's of the Father. We know that it is the Father's song. That we know Father is speaking. That's saying, oh, my Father, Holy Spirit is speaking right now. I know that voice. I know that sound. We have to know the sound of our Father. If we know the sound and the voice of our parents, you know, my mom, I, I can tell what my mom's voice is, is my dad's voice. But with our Father in heaven, we got to learn and know. You know, we have to get that knowing in the spirit. That means our spiritual mind, our spiritual being should be so in tune and in line that we recognize the voice, the tone, the pitch, uh, even the, the speed of how the Father or Holy Spirit talks to us. Yep, my sheep hears my voice. That's correct. Because, you know, the only way to learn that, uh, Brother Ralph, is to continually what? Listen. Sometimes when we pray, we talk too much more than listening of Him. To, we talk a lot that we miss to listen and be uh, submissive and yielding to the voice of the Father. So that's why, you know, it, 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 some people may say, oh, you know, uh, this is what I heard. Not everything that we hear is of the Father. Because remember, there are other thoughts out there. Because thoughts is a vibration. It is an energy. It is in the invisible. Thoughts is in the spiritual realm. We can hear some thoughts of the others that are not of God. And, you know, when you go to places, even Jesus was able to read the thoughts of the people that are around him. He knew what the disciples were thinking because his thoughts was so in tune with God that when he hear, you know, when you hear thoughts are energy, thoughts are vibration, you hear that, you know, you will, something will come to your mind and uh, you think it's a thought that came from you, but when you're around people, sometimes you will think of something thinking, where did that thought come from? It didn't come from me, you know, and it's actually from the people around you because thoughts are vibration. Thoughts are frequencies. And we receive that thoughts and frequencies with, within us as well. So Jesus knew the thoughts of the people around him because he has learned what the sound of the Father is and he has learned what the thoughts of people are and he has learned what the thoughts of the enemies are. So he was able to distinguish the thoughts that he receives. But I would like to receive more of the thoughts of God. I would like to hear more of the thoughts of God. But you know, wouldn't it be nice that you also hear the thoughts of others? <laughs> but then, then you cannot, you know, when you, it's not hearing, it's a sensing. It's a feeling that you know that someone's thinking negative around you, that someone is thinking something not good about you. You can sense that. And sometimes you can sense that someone truly is, you know, bringing out the love thought in their mind, the caring thought, the positive thought. So if we renew our minds and we continue to practice that, we will get sharp. Our spiritual mind has to be sharpened. Yes, my shepherd, my voice, my sheep hear my voice. Jesus saw through disciples too. Yes. So Jesus, he did. Jesus know their thoughts. So we have to distinguish that thoughts that comes to our mind. We have to know if it's of the Father, if it's our own fleshly thoughts that we have been so used to, or is it the thought of your parents, 
the thoughts that were transferred to you, the words that have been transferred to you when you were growing up, are those the thoughts? You know, those thoughts have to be filtered and, you know, uh, make sure that it is not affecting us in a way that it will produce the action of, the, of that thought. Because whatever you think, you say and you act on. If you think it long enough, it will come out your mouth and you will act on it. Whatever you think long enough and start believing it, you will start saying it and acting on it. So sometimes, you know, I know people, some other probably are also thinking about the believers that sometimes, oh, I'm waiting on God. You know, I want to hear from God and see what his thoughts are uh, on this. And, you know, just waiting on God so I can step and move my, you know, you know, take a move. Uh, but, you know, the thoughts of God has been written in the Bible. The will of God has been written in the Bible. So whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is life-giving, whatever will help, whatever will restore, everything that is to bring things to come to life and in its fullness, it is definitely a will of God. Because God is, is, is that God that we have, the God that we, we serve, the God that uh, we are worshiping is that God who wants everything, who actually not want, who has made everything very good. God made everything very good. So it is his will to do good, to say good, to act good, you know, uh, and always search the motives, the purpose, the vision, and your mission of doing it. And if it is in line with the will of God in the Bible, then you know you are on the right track. And if you hear the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit confirming you, the way the Holy Spirit confirms it is by having peace when you start doing it. You having peace by start saying it. You have that peace and joy are manifestations that you are doing the will of God, that you are in line with the will of God. That is the result of having the mind of Christ that we know joy is there and peace is there. If there's no joy or no peace, then we know that thought might not be uh, of God. Um, Jesus did only what his heavenly father thought. Yes. Amen. See, there you go. That's very good, Ralph. That he only did what the, he hears from the father. Now that's, you know, that is that is a process for all of us, you know, because we grew up um, doing the things that we want, sometimes against our parents' will. We, we, we started having our own will and our own desire, but our own will and desire is tainted. Our own will and desire without Christ is tainted because we came from that generation and line where we have a tainted spirit and tainted being. But Jesus Christ now removed that stain and now is showing us, telling us what the mind renewed, uh, what a renewed mind looks like, what a renewed mind is in action. So, okay, I think I have passed my time. Thank you for hanging out with me. Um, I don't see everybody. Thank you, Ralph. Uh, thank you, Sister Pratima, whoever's watching right now. Uh, you know, sorry I can't recognize you because I don't see everybody. I only see some, those who are post and on green light. There you go, Brother Ray. Thumbs up so I can see who you are. Uh, but sometimes I still have to look at the picture. So thank you, Brother Ray. Uh, for joining. Thank you, Ralph, in Singapore. Singapore is an awesome country. Uh, yep, I see Brother Ray. I see Ralph. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you, Pastor Christian. I see you. See, I only see when I get, see the thumbs up of who's watching. And I know now that's the reason why people say, go give me thumbs up, thumbs up, th uh, you know, like, 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 because I think that's the only way I could really see um, hey, Sonny. Okay, see, I didn't know who's watching, so I can't greet you. Give me a hello also or a comment. Um, 
Pastor Christian, Sunny, my cousin, is on. Hey, I love you, cousin. Um, also, my auntie who's watching, Pastor Pressy, Pastor Ariel. I know I saw Overseer a while ago. And thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me. Saturday, hanging out. Um, I really am not doing this frequently. And, but then this morning I got up, uh, and wanted to get my Starbucks and start my day, start learning with, uh, Starbucks coffee, renewing of the mind, mind renewal. And I have, uh, let me show you all that. I have this book on the mind of renewal. It actually is like a uh, workbook. So I really have to study and continue to do so. Um, and then I have another set about the new man. So, uh, don't get tired of learning and reading it over and over again. Don't get tired of reading your book over and over again. Even though you heard about mind renewal, it's going to be always powerful, powerful all the time. Thank you so much. Oh, God bless you too, Ralph. Awesome. Um, and thank you for joining me. I will see you next week, you know, road download. And I know it's late in the Philippines. Uh, have a sweet dream, sweet sleep. And remember, you know your assignment. I know my assignment. We all have an assignment, and I'm doing one right now. My assignment is to learn and study more about who I am that I may become like Christ. That is our uh, infinite or our ultimate goal is to be like him here on earth. Thank you, guys. I love you all. Pastor Christian, thank you. Um, and I'll talk to you another time. All right? God bless you. I love you from Florida. I'm signing out. Peace and joy.